Today we're going to look at one of my favourite tools when it comes to book publishing and that's called Creative Fabrica. Now for those of you who don't know what Creative Fabrica is, it's basically an online library of tons of different types of content that you can download and use in your books. And it goes above that as well. So whilst it might be really useful for your books, you might find other purposes for it as well. So make sure you stay tuned and we're gonna go through everything that's on Creative Fabrica and why it's a great investment for book publishers today. In a nutshell, Creative Fabrica is an online library with tons of different types of content that you can download and use in your books. It has things like fonts, graphics, illustration. It also has mock-ups and now moving into 2023, it even has an AI software built into the subscription as well. So to be completely transparent, before we get into Creative Fabrica, I use it myself. I've used it now for a couple of years and you know, for the value that you're getting there, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It allows me to find new fonts that I can use on my books and on my titles. It allows me to find nice illustrations that I can use in my interiors. And I've even created some notebooks and those kind of things from interiors already uploaded on Creative Fabrica. But now moving into 2023, it's all about AI. And Creative Fabrica are getting on board and we'll take a little look at their AI software called Spark. If you want to take a look at Creative Fabrica for yourself, just click the link down in the description below or the one that's popping up on screen some, sometime about now. <laughs> if you sign up today, it's $4.99 a month, which is an absolutely incredible deal and the cheapest I've ever seen a yearly subscription. You know, 60 quid a year is such a fantastic price for all of the things that I use Creative Fabrica for. Okay, so let's take a look at Creative Fabrica and see what it offers. So going on to Creative Fabrica, you can see along the top, you've got all of the different types of content that you have in the library. I use it for fonts because once you've got your subscription, you can use the 100,000 odd fonts that it's got on there that have been created by individuals. Uh, there's such a wide range of fonts available. Um, and there's even some like pre-made titles that you can download and just drop, drag and drop into things like Photoshop and Canva. Then we go on to the graphics where you've got everything from illustrations, patterns, you've got logos that you can utilize for your book publishing business, for example. Um, and then you've got interiors, stock photos. There's so many uses with the graphics within Creative Fabrica. Um, really, really happy with that. And those are the two main areas that I currently use Creative Fabrica for and just using those alone, it's well worth a subscription. Now, you also have a 3D section, which I've not used before, but it looks really fun. So that's really cool. I could download this 3D paper sculpture of a Dachshund, print it out online and make it for myself. And I could even, seeing as it's got a commercial license, I could sell it as part of a package or something. Then you've got the Spark AI section, which we'll come back to. Moving on to craft. So you've got craft designs, which has so many things like stickers, bunting, uh, you know, t-shirt designs, all those kind of crafty elements are in here. And you even have a needlework section for things like embroidery and knitting patterns if you know you fancy doing that or selling some of those yourself. Then we have some classes available. So these are included within your subscription as well. So for example here we're going to look at how to set up an Etsy shop. And straight away here we've got a ton of classes about creating an Etsy shop online. So if you click on this one we can enroll and there are five sessions of 30 minutes which takes us through how to set up an Etsy shop. If we look for another one, we've got here, if we search for coloring book, how to make your own coloring book in Canva, designing coloring pages in Photoshop. And they say whether they're beginner or intermediate, which is really handy if you know, you're a complete beginner or you've got some sort of level of skill. So I am actually going to enroll in this one. And so here you've got access to the whole course all through Creative Fabrica. 
There's another section called Creative Fabrica Premium, and these ones, I believe, are just for personal use. So these ones you can't utilize yourself for books. Uh, the things with the rights on here, for example, you've got Moomin, uh, yeah, here we go, personal use only on this stuff. But if you want to use it for yourself, print it out, etc., cetera, uh, it's there for you to download and utilize. And to make it easy with rights, there's even a section called print on demand. Anything posted here, you can literally download and sell. So seeing as Halloween is coming up, let's have a little look at some Halloween print on demand assets. And so scrolling here, you can see all the different types of things you can, you can find on Creative Fabrica. But let's say I liked this icon. We can download that, add it on a t-shirt and we're good to go. So we're just gonna have a quick look through the font section because I think the Creative Fabrica font selection is absolutely amazing. And for me, it's worth the subscription by itself. So here we're going to search for Halloween fonts and just have a little look at some of the options. So as you can see here, we've got 2000 results for Halloween fonts and we can niche them down if we want to, if we know what type of font we're looking for. But I think I might narrow my search and search for a bloody Halloween font, which sounds you know, a bit more adult and uh, suitable for my books. Uh, I've got some really, really nice ones here. And I quite like this. There's a few here actually, but I quite like this one, the Horrorama bloody font. So all you need to do is download that, install it, and you're good to use that font. Having a little look in the graphics section. So if we wanted some Halloween witches, for example, for our book, there's witch hats, there's kids cartoons. All of this I could take and utilize as part of my book cover or interior, or if it's got the print on demand option included, which is down here as a special license, we could even sell it on a t-shirt or on a mug or something like that, maybe within an Etsy shop. So this is really, really nice, this SVG that I see right here. So that could work quite well on a Halloween notebook, for example. And all I'd need to do for that is just download it. I'd get given all of these formats here to allow for high resolution printing and we're good to go. So as I'm sure you're aware, licensing is super important. And seeing as anything that we upload to Amazon KDP, to Etsy, we need to own the rights to it. And then you need to make sure that you have the correct license in place to do so. So looking at the Creative Fabrica license here, if we take a look at the summary, we can see that we are allowed to create unlimited physical products, unlimited digital products, create our own items that we sell on print on demand, such as on Amazon KDP. We can use fonts digitally and physically. We can utilize the templates that they've got on there and convert them for ourselves. And what's really nice about Creative Fabrica is once we've uploaded something and we have an active subscription, we can keep selling that forever, even if we cancel our subscription. Here are some things that we're not allowed to do. You can't download the content and then sell it on as is. You know, that's really unethical to do anyway, so it's just using your, your head on that. But the idea is this library of content, you're utilizing it to create your own products. You're not just downloading and ripping it and selling it on because that would be against the terms of service. The second point is very similar. You're not allowed to just sell on the SVGs and fonts. Again, you're not allowed to utilize these downloads for yourself, for your own personal game. The idea is to use them as a product. And again, you're not allowed to just adjust them slightly and sell them on. In terms of usage, as it says here, it doesn't matter when you download the content from Creative Fabrica. What matters is when you publish it and when you go live with that content. As long as you have an active subscription, when you publish it, that's fine in perpetuity, you know, that's fine forever. 
What's not fine is say if you downloaded a load of these illustrations and fonts and then cancelled your subscription, you can't then use those moving forward on new products. So just be careful with those. If you install a load of new fonts on your computer, just remember they're Creative Fabrica and you can only use those while your subscription's going on. That's your kind of general overview of the licensing. But if we scroll down, you've got loads of information about physical products, digital products, and print on demand usage as well. And within the site, there's a couple of different levels of print on demand. There's a basic print on demand usage where say, for example, you download this SVG of this mermaid, you're not allowed to just upload it as is and sell it on a product. You need to create something new from that as a template. So you've got an example here of, on the left-hand side, it's just been uploaded and added to a mug. That would be against the terms of service. But if you've added color to it and added an additional layer of you know, your own personalization to it, that would be absolutely fine. If you want to read more about it, take a little look at the, the licensing. It's always really important to do so. But then some of the products actually have full print on demand usage. So if this Mermaid SVG, for example, had a full print on demand usage, then you could just upload that and sell it on a mug as is, and you don't have to make any changes. But the only caveat here is that you can only sell those full print on demand products whilst you have your subscription in place. So that's just one caveat to remember if you're doing print on demand content using Creative Fabrica. And then you've got all of the lovely legal mumbo jumbo at the bottom that, you know, if you wanna read, it's there, but the above covers most of the information. So as you can see with the licensing, I think it's really, really fair. One thing I love about it is that say if I had a year subscription, created a load of books and then finished my subscription, everything that I've published is still fine to be used, still fine to be sold, and you know, I've got the rights to do so. I think that's a really nice selling point of Creative Fabrica. And you know, it just makes it easy for book publishers to find what they need to help them take their books to the next level and hopefully get more sales. Now, one thing that's new for 2023 is this Spark section. And in here, you've got different Creative Fabrica Spark AI software. So you've got Art, which is a text to image software, very similar to Mid Journey. You've got Writer, which is taking on the likes of ChatGPT. And you've got lots of different things here to create things like patterns. You've got a coloring pages AI software, a sketching software, a prompt builder for your AI prompts. And this one's quite nice here actually, if you're selling on places like Etsy, and that's an AI software to create your cut files. So that's one that I might look into myself. I sell some digital stickers on Etsy and having the cut files would be really useful over just the PDF. So I am going to utilize that moving forward. Now, one caveat with Creative Fabrica Spark is that it's not up to the level of its competitors yet. Mid Journey cost me 30 pounds a month at the moment and there's a reason for that. Creative Fabrica Spark, it's not quite there yet, but hopefully it'll keep improving and it could be a good alternative and a much cheaper alternative as well. So let's test it out. We're gonna ask Creative Fabrica for a coloring page for kids of a T-Rex dinosaur. And similar to Mid Journey, it gives you four options. So as you can see from these, they're not perfect and I don't think they're as good a level as Mid Journey, but to be included within the price is absolutely fantastic. So there might be something that you could take here, adapt it yourself, and then utilize within your books. And what's nice here is anything that you create on Creative Fabrica Spark Art, you can actually sell yourself as a file. So if I created 20 dinosaur coloring pages using this, I could sell them as a bundle and make money off of that. And then going into the Spark Writer, it's a little bit different than ChatGPT and it is a little bit more limited and, and kind of boxed into sections, but it does make it quite nice and simple if you know what you're looking for. So if you want to create a store name for Etsy, write a bio for Etsy, write a greeting card, write an excuse, 
All of those type of things are available in here. So I'm gonna ask the excuse writing tool for an excuse for why I didn't upload this video on time. So I've got the power went out, my computer crashed, I've been really sick, I've been really busy, or I'm having technical difficulties. So take your pick on that one. In terms of the book outline tool, I've asked for uh, an outline for a dinosaur coloring book for kids. And it's come up with a few options here. So it's definitely not as in depth as ChatGPT, but if you're looking for a tool that's included within your subscription, so you know, for me that means it's free because I'm buying it for the other elements, then it's just a nice additional thing to have access to. And I'd hope that it keeps getting better and better. Because at the moment, the Spark area on Creative Fabrica, it's, it's an amazing addition to have. Uh, and it's definitely a good option for beginners. But if you're really serious about publishing, you'd probably want to use ChatGPT for copy and mid-journey or an alternative to that for your text to image AI. Okay, so that was my review and a quick look through Creative Fabrica. If you want a quick summary, it's absolutely fantastic for fonts. It's my go-to for fonts that you can utilize in your books, on your interior and on your cover. And I find it especially useful for creating the Amazon A plus content when you're advertising your book with your visual images on the product page. So let me just show you a quick example of that to finish off. We can download this coloring page mock-up, which we can download and add our pages into, and that will make a lovely Amazon A plus image that can go on your product page. It's something that I'll just keep renewing every year because I use it for fonts, I use it for images, and touch wood, the AI section will get even better as well moving forward. But even without that, it is well worth the price. So yeah, so with Creative Fabrica, with my mid-journey subscription, they're pretty much the two things that I need to create books. I don't use stock photos anymore, and I either utilize something on Creative Fabrica or create it myself using a mid-journey prompt. I hope this video was useful and don't forget to click the link in the description if you want to try out Creative Fabrica for yourself. Okay, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.